Good evening and welcome to Sooner Politics Weekend Report. I'm David Van, publisher of Sooner Politics. On this week's program, we're going to be talking about how the Tulsa Area Republican Party is joining a grassroots effort to promote a platform agenda to the Oklahoma legislature. But first, let's talk about your heating. Up. Tulsa's got a great heat and air company, a triad heating and air conditioning. Triad Heat and Air Service Company is your source for some of the most reliable work on your furnace. Folks, are you going away this weekend? Are you going away during the Christmas break? Don't come back to find out your plumbing just broke because your furnace went out and your plumbing ruined your floors, ruined your carpet, uh, ruined your kitchen cabinets because you have pipe burst because your heat went out. Get it done ahead of time by having a service check. Come, let the Triad Heat and Air people take care of your heat and air needs. Triad serving Eastern Oklahoma. We're glad to have them as uh, one of our favorite partners at Sooner Politics. Let's talk about the Terra endorsement. Tulsa Area Republican Assembly is a group of uh, Republicans in the Tulsa area, not just the county of Tulsa, not just the city of Tulsa, but uh, hundreds of people are part of our organization and our reach. I am happen to be a member, I'm the president uh, this year, but uh, we had a vote at our December meeting to endorse an effort of the Canadian County Republican Party. Uh, Canadian County Chairman Andrew Lopez signed his name to a letter that was approved by his county committee of the Republican Party. Now, it is an agenda that has many issues that are very basic to Republicans. School edu in education reform, reforming the way money is spent, cutting down on the overhead, cutting down on ridiculously mismatched, missized school districts, tiny little districts, overbloated districts. B districts they are spending way too much money on their uh, administrative costs. Uh, another thing they want to get rid of is a number of nuisance licenses in the state, occupational licenses. Uh, we're going to get somewhere on a few of those things already. There are, there are legislators writing bills right now for our next session to go ahead and do that. In fact, uh, the Ethics Commission has weighed in uh, uh, on some things, but uh, the Occupational Licensing Board is already agreeing with some of this agenda to get rid of ridiculous licenses. We'll get into that a little bit more uh, later in the show. But uh, the state party chairman, Pam Pollard, has sought to distance herself from this agenda, uh, issuing a press statement on her own uh, saying that this effort does not, uh, <clears throat> does not come from the state party. In fact, she went further to say what the state party does support and what efforts uh, the state party is backing although she has gotten no authorization from her state committee. She, in fact, canceled her state committee. That was supposed to be about two weeks ago and has rescheduled it for next year, uh, early in January. So, uh, <clears throat> at least the Canadian County Republican Party did it right. And grassroots uh, groups and individuals across the state are signing their name to endorse the agenda to bring some common sense uh, reforms. It does include some things about abortion, uh, the fact that we're looking the other way, that we're not willing to challenge that issue when we have a golden opportunity before this court, before this federal U.S. Supreme Court, and with an administration that uh, could be helpful in that effort. So there are a few other things on that letter. If you look at SoonerPolitics.org on the editorial page, you'll see where uh, the Tulsa Air Republican Assembly has agreed to that. Let's move on. Uh, in other news, uh, the Attorney General, Mike Hunter, has uh, weighed in on some things with the Health Department. So uh, we've got some uh, very interesting things happening as a result of that. Uh, <clears throat> Mike Hunter is, um, uh, you know, he's been talking about, let me get his picture up here. Mike Hunter advised the State Board of Health 
that they went way over their bounds, way beyond their constitutional limits, in trying to restrict the will of the people in bringing cannabis medicines to the market for patients who are authorized by their doctor. The Board of Health has made it pretty clear that they are not happy with this. Uh, they're not happy with the freedom it gives people to get uh, their own health care choices made. In fact, Tom Bates uh, told an interim study of the legislature uh, that he has really real problems considering it actually uh, medicine or medical marijuana. And he doesn't like the freedom that it gives people to make their own medication choices as far as how often, how much, what kind of supply they're able to attain, for how long. Uh, he's, um, he really doesn't trust the Oklahoma citizen to take care of their own health without his department overseeing, stipulating, regulating, regulating it out of feasibility, out of the cost uh, attainment to where people could afford their medicine. So my Hunter is telling them these rules you're putting in, you're still going beyond what your authority is. They can't write the statutes at the agency. They can clarify within the current, they're going way beyond what their authority is. So we've got problems going on. Mike Hunter, I salute you. Haven't always agreed with you. Sometimes I've been out, sometimes I've been outright angry with you for miscarriage of justice from your department. But on this one, Mike Hunter, you did it well. Congratulations. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about your carpets. Clean Pro serves Eastern Oklahoma, some of the finest people, great reputation for taking care of your carpet and tile cleaning needs. They also had a handle water restoration, like, for instance, that time you didn't get your furnace checked, went away for the holidays, came back, had a pipe burst, the house is flooded. What are you going to do? How are you going to clean this up? You call in Clean Pro. Jameson Fott and his father, George Fott, have been operating Clean Pro out of Muskogee for a long time. They've been serving all of eastern Oklahoma, have such a fine reputation, in fact, that uh, when George Fott, as a Republican, decided to run for the legislature in a heavily, overwhelmingly Democrat district, they voted him into office. Not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, five times he was elected to serve the people of his district because even the Democrats know, hey, a guy who's willing to clean the dog poop out of uh, grandma's carpet can't be, uh, can't be all bad even if he is a Republican. So do like I do, uh, trust Clean Pro for your carpet cleaning, tile cleaning, and water restoration damage needs. All right, let's go back to what's next on our agenda. <clears throat> So, we've got dispensaries, dispensaries, dispensaries. 130 cities across Oklahoma now have licensed cannabis medicine dispensaries. They have been opening left and right over the last few weeks, and there's probably one neither in your town or close to it. Oklahoma City has 197 of them just in the city proper. Once you add in other uh, suburbs in Oklahoma County, you've got probably close to 300 dispensaries. Is that enough? Heck yeah, it's too many. But not all of them are actually open. Uh, some of these are just licenses that are being hung on to until a later date. They're looking at the feasibility and deciding what to do uh, at another time. But hundreds and hundreds of them are open. They're open for people who have their medical marijuana card from their doctor, authorized by the state, and are getting healthy for a number of serious health conditions, not the least of which is the serious pain management. Those people with chronic arthritis, age-related diseases, uh, spinal issues, nerve issues, where opiates are not working anymore. People are getting addicted to opiates. People are dying from opiates. They're dangerous. Many people 
are turning to cannabis medicines and people I know are getting well. Do I like pot? Do I smoke pot? Oh no, I'm a teetotaler. But I respect medicine when it's an improvement over the current state of life. Uh, people very near and dear to me who have suffered with anxiety, post-traumatic stress, including thousands and thousands and thousands of veterans in Oklahoma with PTSD who are being pumped full of benzodiazepine tranquilizers uh, by the VA and are walking zombies if they can get up to walk. It's terrible. Many of them are turning to cannabis medicines, getting well, getting their lives restored. Families getting a decent night's sleep for once because mom or dad who just got back from their third tour in the Middle East is no longer having night terrors and flashbacks. Ninety years ago on this day, marijuana was fully legal in Oklahoma, but liquor was a federal crime. Okay? So, <clears throat> this is an interesting development. We're going to keep watching it. Sooner Politics has committed a lot of resources to following this. Why? Because nobody else is. And there are people for whom this is very important. So, that's what's going on. And uh, I've got other news. This one's going to be a scoop. This man is Bob Sullivan. Bob Sullivan is a fine man. I know him. He's been a client of my business. Uh, he and Jeannie are Oklahomans from Tulsa. Bob's been an oil man. Bob ran for governor in 2006. Didn't win, but he ran a respectable race. In fact, his uh, opponents in the race highly, highly speak of him and uh, think he's a solid guy. Well, Bob's been doing a lot for Oklahoma, even outside of elective office. Right now he's chairing the um, uh, a commission studying agency performance audits. It's APAC. I reached out to Bob this weekend and he I said, when are those audits coming up? He said, the first bunch that we have the budget to authorize are going to be coming back in later this month and early in January. They'll be released in mid-January and they'll be released to the public at the same time they're released to the legislature. I salute Bob for what he's doing in a fine way. He's earnestly seeking to help Oklahoma operate more efficiently. So, <clears throat> uh, congratulations, Bob, and the people in the, that are serving on this commission. I congratulate Mary Fallon for appointing Bob to this uh, board and his colleagues for appointing him to lead the board. So let's look forward to good things coming up from that. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about your cabinets. Yeah, I'm talking about the ones that uh, probably came with your house. You had no choice. Well, now you have a choice. Now you can bless somebody special in your life, somebody who probably spends more time in your kitchen than you do with a gift certificate for some cabinets, whether it's refacing, whether it's restoring, whether it's adding to, whether it's tearing out. Go see my friends down at the Carpenter Shop, serving Central Oklahoma, 405-942-2644, uh, Carpenter Shop, serving Oklahoma City and Central Oklahoma area. Carpenter Shop makes the finest cabinets. In fact, they actually go over to the Philippines and to other Asian countries and other uh, areas where lumber is harvested, exotic woods and stuff, and actually pick out the lumber for themselves. They don't just take whatever is down at your latest uh, shipment from home, to Home Depot or to Lowe's. These are fine cabinets. You'll see the difference. Stop by their showroom. So, let's talk about what else is going on here. Uh, Charles McCall just mentioned that he's going to be keeping his same top leadership in the House. That means John Eccles will continue to be majority leader. That means that Kevin Wallace will continue to be the budget chair. Uh, there are going to be a number of other things coming up. I don't know of any change. Obviously, there's a turnover in the legislature, uh, quite a big one. Nearly half of the House is new. So you're going to have a lot of people moving into leadership, stepping up, uh, and uh, we're going to be seeing some things on that. Here's another thing. <clears throat> Many of you may not be aware that Oklahoma has probably the longest constitution 
in America. Our state constitution. I'm not talking about the federal one. I'm not talking about what they uh, came up with in Philadelphia 240 some years ago. I'm talking about the constitution of Oklahoma. In fact, Oklahoma almost was rejected as a state back in Teddy Roosevelt's administration when Teddy said himself of our constitution, that thing is twice as long as the Bible and twice as hard to understand. And it's only gotten worse, folks. Oklahoma Constitution has been amended over 150 times. That's an average of, what, about once a year? No, not even. About once every eight or nine months, we, on average, we amend our Constitution. Well, part of the language of this Constitution is a mandate. It says, hey, legislature, every 20 years ago uh, or so, every 20 years actually, max, you can't go longer than that, you must ask the voters, put it a resolution on the next ballot, general election ballot. Do you guys want to have a new state constitutional convention? And the voters can just decide yes or no. The last time they presented that to the people of Oklahoma, was 40 some years ago. In fact, about 25 years ago, they asked us, should we quit asking you? And the voters said, no, you keep asking us every 20 years. That is our place of involvement in our state government. But the legislature refuses to work with the people. Well, this session you're going to see a uh, significant increase in number of bills, number of sponsors supporting legislation to just simply ask the voters, do you want to have a new constitutional convention? Most of these bills, from what I'm hearing from uh, members of the legislature, are following uh, the model of the Gary Bands legislation. He wrote it when he was in the legislature four or five years ago. It spells out the makeup of the delegates to a Constitutional Convention for Oklahoma. Uh, Kyle Loveless had some excellent language. I'm going to be researching this matter and comparing the language on that. Kyle Loveless, of course, was a state senator uh, up until a couple years ago. So, um, so far I've heard from Representative Scott Fettgatter, a freshman, actually sophomore now, uh, legislature out of Okmulgee. Uh, Senator Joe Newhouse out of Broken Arrow. Nathan Dom out of Broken Arrow. Uh, I'm hearing it from other people. Uh, I'll have a full list and write a report on this probably in the week ahead. So be looking for that. Um, all right, so that's one of the things going on. And another one of our things is um, the Board on Licensing, Occupational Licensing, just presented a recommendation to our legislature not to add more licenses, not to add more bureaucracy, more walls between you and the career you're choosing to commit yourself to. In fact, they're saying uh, we don't need to be licensing people for home inspections, uh, for to be a licensed music therapist. Yeah, yeah, they actually, actually a legislature wrote that bill just in the last couple of years. And a majority of our legislature voted for it. And our governor signed it. Yeah, folks, they think you need to be licensed to be a music therapist. Oh, crap, every teenager I know of has a bad day. Ever since I was a kid, man, we'd go in our bedroom, shut the door, leave me alone, turn on the music, and just cry in our pillow. Was that therapy? Sure it was. Did we need a license? No. We can take care of it ourselves. But <clears throat> anyway, so that's one of the things going on. Uh, I want to talk a little bit of shop with you. Sooner Politics. As again, I said, I am the publisher of Sooner Politics. It actually is a team effort. It was an organization I put together uh, nearly five years ago, bringing together dozens, 
dozens and dozens of bloggers. Bloggers who write on politics, some who write on issues, some who write on behalf of an organization. And uh, Sooner Politics is a free news service. We've tried different ways to bring the news to you, and this weekend report is one of the things we're doing. I'm going to be trying to do a half-hour show once a week, and uh, I'm chosen sometime on Saturdays. We're going to work this out. It is going out live on YouTube. It is a U YouTube live uh, programming. It will also be part of the bunker, Oklahoma Taxpayers Unite, the OTU um, media platform will be including it. It will be on our social media, Facebook Live. We'll be putting uh, our, our, the Facebook uh, page for Sooner Politics will have it, and it will be shared around there. It's also being podcast on SoundCloud. That means your smartphone app will be able to you know, uh, subscribe to it, pick it up. It will be a weekly half-hour show. Yes, you heard a few ads, and I'm telling you, I'm just uh, putting those in just to keep the format. This will be going out and syndicated. You will be seeing it on the OTU network. It is all uh, for the people there. The reason we're doing it on a Saturday, uh, there really isn't much news going on on Saturday. I want to be able to bring it to you live. Uh, yeah, just like tonight, I want to uh, give me some feedback. Obviously, I'm an amateur at this. Obviously, the production value is not what I'd like it to be, but it's the best I can offer, and I will get better. Trust me, I will commit to getting better. Until then, I want to thank you for being part of this show tonight, and I ask you to uh, tell your friends about it, share it on social media, and give me some feedback. Let me know what things you'd like to cover, what things you're sick of hearing me talk about. Uh, I'm a big boy. I can take it, but uh, appreciate you so much. And uh, for those of us at Sooner Politics who bring the news to you, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. Have a good night. Hope you're having a Merry Christmas season.